Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning. This is another session of Living Letters. Like I always tell us, Living Letters has been designed for you to be informed. And those who are informed are the ones that will reform. And those who are reformed are the ones that will transform and change their universe. They are the ones that will impact life. They are the ones that will take hold of the places of leadership in this end time. God has great plans for every human soul. God has great plans for you. And the, and the desire of God is for you to have dominion in this life. It's for you to impact, leave your footprints on the stand of time. And I believe that you will not pass this world without accomplishing this in the name of Jesus Christ. The purpose of God for your life will be established and you will leave a legacy for generations to come in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray as you begin to listen to the word of God this morning that the eyes of your understanding will be opened and I pray that the light of God will enter into you and make you to begin to see and gain insight into the deep things of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning. This morning, I, I want to share with us, uh, I want us to go into a bit of study uh, concerning finding favor with God. Finding favor with God. Finding favor with God. The book of Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. The prophet Jeremiah was speaking. He said, our Lord God, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and by thy outstretched hand. He said, nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. And the Lord himself attested to this in verse 27 of Jeremiah 32. He said, behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything to add for me? Praise the name of the Lord. In the book of Luke, in the book of, um, of Luke chapter 1 verse 37, the angel told Mary and said, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 27, it says, uh, uh, Jesus was speaking, he said, with man it is relatively impossible, but with God all things are possible. Praise God. 
Matthew 19, 26, he repeated the same thing there. He said, but with man, it is relatively impossible. There are some things that are beyond the power of man. But he said, but with God, all things are possible. So if with God all things are possible, it behoves me to let you understand and to bring it back to your knowledge and for your understanding that God is able to do all things. That God is capable of getting things accomplished. The book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 90 says, God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The, the glory of God is abundant provision. What he has is unlimited. And whatever is your need is more compared to what God can do. Therefore, this morning, I want you to be rest assured that God has got your back. I want you to be rest assured that God can do all things, and God will do all things. He does not lie. God is not mutable like man. If God says it, he does it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 20, it says all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. Therefore, God says it, he does it. Praise the name of the living God. God says it, he does it. And, and, and therefore, I, we need not fear about the possibility of we getting all that we desire from God. Praise the name of the Lord. We need not fear about that because all things are is ours. Paul says all things are yours. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that the things that have been freely given unto us. Hey, praise God. God has freely given everything unto you. That was all things that pertain unto life and godliness is yours. Therefore, we have that hope. Therefore, we know that God, it is not the problem with God to give us. God is willing to give us. In fact, he has made provision for us to get. It is for us to get it. Now, how do we get this thing? But we need to have favor with God. Before you can get something from someone, you need the favor of that person. You need to please the person. What is favor? Praise God. What is favor? Favor is an act of kindness that is beyond the usual or what is done. Favor is an act of kindness beyond what is due, beyond what is due you or what is usual. And God is ready to favor you. God is ready to favor you. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, it says, if the father a good wife, if the father a good wife, find that favor. Uh, if the father a good wife, find a good thing and obtains favor, from the Lord. And then some people just say that, okay, it's until you find that you have favor. But the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs 19.14, it says, wealth and riches are from are from the Father. Said, but a good wife is from the Lord. A good wife is from the Lord. What another version says, a good wife is favor from the Lord. So when you have favor, God gives you good things. Praise God. God gives you good things. James 1.17 says, all good and perfect gift comes from God, who is the giver of life, life of which there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. So which means that whatever God gives is permanent. So God desires to give you. God has made provision for you to get. God, Bible says, if he did not, in the book of Romans chapter 8, uh, it says, if he did not withhold his only begotten son from us, uh, and he gave him all to die for our sins. He said, how much more will he not also with him freely give us all things? Get that. Freely give us all things. Jesus said in the book of John 15 verse 7, he said, if my word, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, he said, you will ask what you want and it shall be granted you. In the book of John in the, book, in the book of John 14, 14, John 14, 13, he says, if you obey my command, he said, you, he said, you shall ask whatever you want. He said, and I will give it to you. He said, if that of you ask me nothing, ask that your joy may be full. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 7, say, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So that is settled. Our ability to get and God, uh, God's willingness to give us is a settled, is a done deal. Praise God. But many times we find it difficult being able to get all these things from God. Many times it's like you pray and pray and pray and it seems as if the answer is not coming. Many times 
it's, it's, it's like we don't even get some things so and we wonder but all these things which i have highlighted which have been spoken are things that are true are sure that god has spoken in his word praise god why is it that we find it difficult to harness these promises why is it why is it difficult that we find it difficult to get answers to our to what to our petition to get answers to our desires and what we want but this money we shall be able to find out how to find favor with god like i said favor is an act of kindness beyond beyond that which is due that is beyond that which you deserve beyond that which you deserve or the usual so god is willing to grant you favor this money and how do we get that favor isaiah 65 and verse, isaiah 65 verse 24 he said he says before you call I have answered. He said, while you are yet speaking, I have heard. Hallelujah. So God is willing. God is ready. God wants to make you happy. The Bible says he rejoiced in the prosperity of his people. God rejoiced in you making progress. God rejoiced in you having all things. Because like I said, he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God wants your life to be easy. God wants your life to be full of abundance. God says, multiply, replenish the half. He said, have all things, have dominion, have, you know, God has given us everything. How do we find favor with God this morning? The first thing we need to know is we need to have the fear of the Lord. For you to obtain favor from God this morning, you need to have the fear of God. We need to have the fear of what the book of Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. Knowledge of the only one is understanding. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of God is understanding. The Bible tells us in the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, it says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Proverbs 19 verse 2 says, for a soul to be without knowledge is not good. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, but knowledge of the only one is understanding. So for you to, to have the wisdom, for you to fear God, you need to know him. For you to fear God, you need to know him. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. It says, then shall we know if we follow on to know. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 6 says, I desire mercy. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Knowledge of the only one instead of burnt offerings. God says he desires you to know him. If you know God, then you will fear him. Fear of God is the first thing. Psalm 34 verse 9. It says, fear ye the Lord. Ye is saints. There is no want. Can you get that? There is no want. There is no lack to them that fear God. When you fear God, you will get all things from him. When you fear God, you will, you will not be able to withhold any good from coming to you. How do you fear God? When people are joined, when people are doing, when people are doing wickedly, you will not join the multitude to, to do wickedly. But I say join not the multitude to sin. When people, when when you have a choice to commit sin uh, or to do right, you will make the right choice. Praise God. But Bible tells us concerning Joseph, he told Potiphar's wife and said, My master has not withheld anything from me in this house. Say, so how will I do this evil against God? That is the fear of God. It's not even talking about Potiphar. It's talking about God. That God is the one who has granted me the favor for my master to, 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 to give me all things, to elevate me, to promote me. Do not abuse favor. And how you will not abuse favor is by having the fear of God, the reverence of God. Many people do not understand this. They rather go to mountain but every day, every morning, going from mountain to pillar to post, praying and praying and praying endlessly, like 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 the prophets of Behar in the book of First Kings chapter, uh, uh, in the book of First Kings eighteen, 
we had the, uh, uh, Elijah to them. He said, keep shouting all day. They will strike themselves, put, put, draw blood. Many of us draw blood. Many of us will fast and pray, hit our head against the rock. Many of us will scream and shout. You attend all sorts of prayers, yet you are not hearing that there is no answer to your prayer. Do you fear God? Many will leave that place and they will keep malice. They will leave that place. They will deprive people of their rights. They will leave that place. Place. They will add. They will add extra. They will. They will. They will pack. They will pack what they use for measuring. They will pack it. They will do wickedly. They will cheat other people. As long as you do those wicked things, as long as the fear of God is not in you, you cannot have favor with God. So I'm calling us, no matter who you are, as a child of God, fear the Lord. There is no want, no lack to those who fear God. So if your prayer is not being answered, go and check. Have you, have you, in all that you are doing, is there the fear of God in you? Is there the fear of God in what you do? Praise the name of the Lord. Number two talks about obedience. Obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. So what is saying there is to be obey is not complete. The complete package, the complete package is your willingness to obey. See that it is good that you obey. Your passion to obey, your desire, your joy to obey. Just knowing and having an understanding that, wow, it is for my good. Then it benefits you. You will eat of the good of the land. In the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, he says, and if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear, 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 give ear to his commandments and statutes. Praise God. Praise God. He said, none of these sicknesses or diseases will come unto you. Bible, God is saying, obey. Obey. If we obey God, we will have what we need. If you obey God, when we are talking about obedience to God, you, the, the status is talking about, the commandments is talking about, are also instructions. God will instruct you. God wants to instruct you on how to get things done. If you will, I can fulfill the conditions, it will be done. Let me give you an example. Beyond what you are thinking this morning about the Ten Commandments, the obedience. That was at the time God asked me and said, God said to me, I was traveling abroad. And he said, you are traveling. And then I needed to go get my, my, my visa. When I got to the place, though we normally queue before we enter the embassy. And as we queued, a woman was carrying a baby. I was coming. And the Holy Spirit said, let her give her the allowance. The lady asked me that, please, can she stand in my front? I wanted to say no, it is wrong. You have need to go, need to go and stay. You, you, you must kill like normal Nigerians, like, like you must kill like normal people, be disciplined. The Holy Spirit cautioned me and said, Let her come, give her that space. That was an instruction. And I obeyed. That is obedience. When I did that, he said, You will know why I asked you to allow her. She was she was disobeying, she was not doing what was right. But when she came, God said, Allow her, let her do as she pleases. And I allowed her to, to stay in my front. When we entered the embassy, it was 6.30 a.m. interview. There was only one man, one, two people. The first man on the right, the next was a woman far down. But she was not even ready. It was the first man that was, that was granting interview. He called the first person, rejected that person. Called the second person, rejected that person. God, by the time he was calling the third person, he called, it was that woman's number. Now, I should have been the one that would have gone to him. And this guy, I guess, he woke up on the wrong side of the bed in the morning. And the woman went there. As she was going, this, we said, you see why I asked you to give her the allowance? Because that is not the person that should attend to you. I have prepared somebody to attend to you. So she got there and she was rejected. Immediately she was rejected. She was turning back to go. Then I almost got into fear. I said, Lord, but see now, 
He, she's, she's, she's coming back. Going, the man is going to call me. The Holy Spirit said, calm down. He said, the man that is going to give the audience is coming now. And I saw a white man that was coming to this cubicle. And as he was coming to this cubicle, you know, this other man was supposed to call my number. But instead, he called that woman back for no reason at all. And as he was attending to her, this man called me. That was how I called my visa. If you are willing and obedient, I should have stood on my right. Go to the back. Go to the back. Sometimes God is instructing you. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. I have so many examples of this obeying obedience to God and doing us a lot of good. It has preserved me. It has protected me. It has kept me. It has made provision for me. It has given me that which was due, that which that, that which God had plans to give me because I listened to instruction. Praise God. So when they're talking about the commandments, when they're talking about the status, they're talking about it's, it's not only in, in the Ten Commandments, not only in what they do and don't, but also in instructions. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalm 84, verse 11, it said, the Lord is the son and a shield. He will give grace and glory. Nothing good will live with old from them that walk uprightly. First John 3, 22, he says, we, we receive whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do all that is pleasing in his sight. Because we keep his commandments and do all that is pleasing in his sight. With his short, whatsoever we ask of him, we receive. Because we obey his commandments. Obedience will cause you to always walk in favor before God. The Bible says, and the, and the boy Jesus, be in favor before God and before men. Before you can have favor before men, you must first have favor with God. And when you are a child, when you are obedient, you will definitely, obedient to God, you will always have favor with him and with men. Remember, even Jesus, at his tender age, when he was in the house, the parents were looking for him. And they found him in the synagogue. He was preaching. He was reading the scriptures. And they said to him, son, we have been looking for you everywhere. Why, why would you cause us to be looking for you? He said, would you not allow me to go about my father's business? The Bible said, nevertheless, he obeyed his parents and followed them. Praise God. Obedience will always make God to be biased towards you. Remember, Peter said in the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 36, said, for of a shorty, God is no respecter of person, but God respect them that obey him. God is biased. He grants favor. Remember, favor is beyond what is due. Favor is beyond the usual. And when you live a life of obedience before God, you have favor with Him. Number three, service. Number three, service. Praise God. Number three, service. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. Service says, And you shall serve the Lord ha, your God, and ye shall serve the Lord your God. And automatically, He will bless your bread and your water. Automatically, you become a blessed person. Automatically, He will bless the works of your hands. Automatically, it will multiply you. Praise God. Automatically, things will happen to you. In the book of Job, chapter 6 and verse 11, it says, if you will obey and serve him, if you will obey and serve him, service, if you obey and serve him, then, then, then you shall spend your days in prosperity. Hallelujah. And your years in pleasure. The Amplified Version says, and your years in pleasantness and joy. If you serve the Lord, you will spend your days. It is automatic. Those who serve God has automatic access to prosperity. Have automatic access to abundance. Have automatic access to all their needs being met. Make God your priority. The book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31 to 33. What does it say there? Jesus was the one speaking here. He says that, therefore take no thought of what to eat and what to drink. Verse 32, he says, these are the things that preoccupy the Gentiles. These are things that preoccupy the people of the world. Always worried about what to eat or to drink. He said, but your own is different because you are in a different kingdom. So all you need to do is to meet the condition. What is the condition? Say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and is, is God's righteousness. Say, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
the book of Luke says, and all these things that the Gentiles seek after. And he went for I said, take no thought of tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Many of us call this scripture, but we do not fulfill the condition. The condition is seeking God. In your place of work, do you seek God there? Do you prioritize God? Do you serve the Lord? Do you, do, are you a witness of the gospel of God? I have always said to us, when Jesus said you shall be a witness to it, is your life witnessing Christ where you are? It shows if your life is witnessing Christ in your neighborhood. If your life is witnessing Christ in your place of work. If you serve God, you find yourself a church, a Bible-based believing church, where God has planted you and you commit yourself to the service of God. You help your neighbors. You do that which is good. You, 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 you are nice. You do good to others. You are seeking God. You are trying to please God. You have prioritized God. You make God number one. Any times there is something to be done and there are some things you wish to do, but you know that this is in the service of God, you prioritize God. God also will prioritize you. God is no respect of presence, but God says, if you seek me, if you serve me, I, your Lord, will take care of every need. You don't need to ask me. I have been in this situation numerous times. Serving my God just with passion. Now, your motive must be right. Your motive must be done out of pure love, out of pure desire to make God happy, out of pure desire to, 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 to work with God, out of pure desire to make God's kingdom to be established on earth. If you are doing it with love, if you are doing it with passion, nothing good will be withheld from you. The Bible says, do not serve God deceitfully. Because if you are serving God with wrong motives, I'm going to get this from that. I mean, because I want to get that, you may not get any. That's why some of us, the Bible says, you ask and you ask and means to consume or you're lost. But if you are seeking God with a pure heart, with a, just out of your love, you just desire good, you just desire to please Him, you just desire for God to take number one place in your life, in your money before you go to work, you lift up uh, you lift up your voice as intercession, as intercessor to other people, as intercessor for the church. You pray for your nation. You pray for others. Uh, you take a stand for others. Uh, you do not withhold good from them that seek it. Uh, God is saying that I see you. You are pleasing me. You are seeking me first. You want to please me. You want to make me happy. Definitely good will not be withhold from you. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Many people go to church, they want the pew, they don't do anything. And they expect manna to fall to their laps. God is no respecter of person. That's why you see some people being blessed. And you, you find yourself on the other side. And you are saying, what is special about this person? The thing that is special about this person is that the person has prioritized God. He's seeking God's kingdom first. <laughs> when it clash, when, 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 when work clash with service to God, you choose to serve God. Because remember that it's nothing which you have or which you are that you have not received from God. And so when you prioritize him, God also will prioritize you. Many times, I, I'm just thinking of something. I will just hear God say, do you want it? I'm just say, wow. I say, yes, I get it. Get it. Sometimes when I was going to, first time I was going to travel, I was just praising and worshiping him in the morning. I'm so that to God. I want to just please him. I just want to serve him. He was almost, as he almost said to me, now get set, you are going to, you are traveling abroad. That is what God does for people who serve him. You don't need to ask. Sometimes, most times you don't need to ask. He said, take no thought. He knows what is good for you. And he will get it done for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Philippians 4, 19, like I said, said, my God shall supply all my needs are gone into his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We will continue from there next week. I will be rounding up next week. Our time is fast, 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 pain. I want to be keeping to time. God bless you. Please I advise us after tonight, after this morning, please spend the whole of today. Listen to this message over and over again. Share it with many people. The mystery, what is so mysterious that caused people to begin to say, eh, 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 God says, I have mercy, I have mercy. Eh, it is the sovereignty of God. God hardly ever puts his sovereignty into use. It is when there are some things that is beyond your scope that he does that. 
basically is the same God. Bible says it is the same God that that rules over all. He said he is the same God of the Jews, is the same God of the Greeks, is the same God of the Gentiles, is the same God over all. The Bible says the same God over all is rich unto all that call upon him. God is no respecter of persons. What makes that difference is what I am sharing with you. Is the only way for you to grasp it better. So after this morning, when you come back from work or when you are going to the office, listen to this message over and over again. Send it, share it with numerous people. Let them also begin to have an understanding of how favor comes to them, how favor have come to other people, and how favor will also come to them. How they will not be limited or be restrained. How the enemy will not be able to deprive them of what is rightfully theirs. How God will always open the door. The Bible says, "Is the one who opens the door that no man can shut. God will shut a door that no man can open. God will shut the devil against the devil in your life. He will open the door unto his good treasure for you in the name of Jesus Christ. As you step out this morning, you step out into abundance. You step out into plenty. The lines fall for you in sad places. You dip your feet in oil. The Lord establish your feet under you. The Lord enlarge your coast. You break forth on the right. You break forth on the left. He causes his face to shine upon you. The Lord grant you special favor. The Lord causes you to ride upon your high places. May your heavens be open in the name of Jesus Christ. May he come unto you today as both the former and the latter reign, anointing you to be able to do great exploits in the name of the Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, it says that, Wow, those that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. As you step out today, they are anointed to do exploits. They are anointed to be the answer. They are anointed to be the provider of answers. They are anointed to be the problem solver in the platform where you have found yourself. It's upon you today. They will desire you. They will seek for you. They will celebrate you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So when you go, you will return. He will preserve your going out. He will preserve your coming in. God bless you. God be with you. May the peace of God guard your heart, sir. May the peace of God be with you. Bible says uh, those who those, those who put their trust in God, he said they will have peace. Uh, God will keep him in perfect peace. Would mind is stayed upon him. May your mind stay continually upon the Lord today, and may the peace of God keep you, surround you, and keep all that is yours. May his glory be over your life and all your household in the name of Jesus Christ. May the fire of God surround you, and may his glory be in your midst. The Bible says the shout of the king is in their midst. The shout of joy and rejoicing will not cease from your life. As you step out today, you go forth celebrating, you go come back rejoicing in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God be with you. So we meet on Friday for the video. It's the power pack, the prophetic hour when God speaks and it is done. He commands and he stands fast. Please invite as many people as possible for the prophetic hour on Friday, just 30 minutes from 12 midnight to 12.30 in the morning. God bless you. God be with you. Till we meet again. Your testimonies are sure. You will testify in Jesus' mighty name.